What's up everyone, my name is Gus and welcome to the channel. I hope you all have been enjoying Side Order as much as I have. I've had a blast playing this DLC and I'm still playing it because honestly it has a lot of replay value and there's just so many different ways you can play this DLC. I am planning on a review of the DLC in the future, whether it's worth it to buy it in the future for yourself or if you're currently playing it, what are different things that you can do in the DLC to get the most bang for your buck. That'll be for a future video, but for now, I'll be going over how to get a perfect color palette in Splatoon 3 side order. Now, before going more into the video, I just want to provide a spoiler warning. This video does show gameplay of me, you know, playing side order. So if you want to go completely blind into it, maybe it's not the best to watch this video at this time that's completely okay i also show some weapons on the screen that you may be able to catch that is a secret weapon so if you just want to avoid spoilers altogether i just recommend maybe you know come back to this video at another time but yeah if you'd like to keep watching you've been warned now for those that don't know a perfect palette is basically a palette after you finish one complete run that has all the same colors in a specific palette. Now, the game offers a variety of palettes. So you have power, you have support, you have range, mobility, lucky, drone, and there are ways to manipulate your RNG to get this perfect palette. Now, I wasn't able to get a full perfect palette, but I can assure you that this method is the best way to get it. I hope you guys find this guide useful. I'll be doing more side order content, hopefully. But yeah, if you enjoyed the video, give that like button, subscribe, comment. I'd really appreciate it. I work hard on these videos to make sure y'all get quality videos now and in the future. With that out of the way, let's get started with the video. All right, so the first thing you have to know what to do is you need to be skill enough to complete any level that's thrown at you at any floor. There's been some times where I was in the first initial floors using Bucket, and as you may know, if you've already played Side Order, you would know that the weapons start off very underpowered. So if you come across a, you know, a floor where it has a rigorous heart or, you know, danger rigorous, and it has the color palette that you need, and you don't have enough cash because, you know, you're barely starting off the run, you need to be skilled enough to take on those tasks for you to move on. In a nutshell, what I'm trying to say is don't skirt away from a challenge just because it shows up as rigorous and it's in the first few floors. If it has your color, you gotta be good enough to complete those type of levels because they're gonna keep showing up the more you get up in higher levels. Now, the second thing you wanna know is that each weapon that's provided to you in the DLC has a common tone associated with the weapon. So for example, with Big Man's palette or the Slosher's palette, the most common tone for this weapon is support and the second most common tone is drone. Each specific weapon has their own common tone and their second most common tone. Basically what this is just indicating is that this is just likelier for you to have these specific colors appear to you on the floor. So I wanted to get a pure drone, you know, run and I like playing bucket. So this was the weapon that I chose and it made the most sense for me. If I wanted to, I could have gone Brella or I could have gone heavy. They have a common tone and a common tone as well. Whereas bucket has the second most common tone. Whenever you're picking a specific color that you want to go for, look at the weapon that you're potentially getting the color for and this will likely help you out. There are ways of, you know, getting a color for a weapon that's not your tone. So for example, if I wanted to do a bucket that's pure red or power, it is possible, but you're gonna have to take off some hacks from Arena. And hacks in this game are really useful for helping you with your runs. If not, you're just gonna be taking a long time. Now, I mentioned Marina's hacks. If you don't know, if you talk to Marina, you're able to buy things to, you know, basically improve your performance in the game. There are some specific hacks that I recommend for any run that you're doing when it comes to, you know, doing a perfect palette. So for example, I recommend buying all random factors. 
floor reset is really helpful when you get on a floor and you find yourself stuck choosing between three different color palettes that are not the ones that you're looking for. By doing a floor reset, you're able to reset the floor and it gives you brand new palettes that you could potentially get. I recommend maxing it out. I'm still working on that right now, but basically the more you max it out, the more cheaper it gets. And as you know, cash can sometimes fly by in this game. So having the cheapest option is really good. Double chip rate is just really good if you're really trying to go for a full color perfect palette because sometimes you only get one chip and sometimes you're not able to fill out your whole palette as you saw in the picture earlier where I showed you the perfect palette that I had. I didn't have it full, but double chip rate increases the chances of getting double chips, which makes it easier for you to fill it out if you get two for one. Color chip bias is incredibly important to turn on if you're trying to get a you know, color that is associated with your palette's common color. So for this one, it increases the chances and the frequency of getting a color that your palette is associated with. So I recommend turning all of these on and maxing it out. Like I said, I'm still working on this one, but I really recommend it. If you're going for a drone palette or a teal palette as I have, I recommend maxing out everything per for the pearl drone. The reason I did this is because this specific palette is incredibly fun. Just seeing Pearl kind of take care of any everything is just what really made it fun for me. So I recommend, you know, if you want to do a Pearl drone palette, go ahead and max everything out. Now the last hacks that you want to get from Marina is the vending machine discount, the vending machine reset, the 15th floor vending machine, and the 25th floor. The vending machine discount just comes in clutch in case you get to a vending machine and you see a particular color that you want. This just makes it cheaper, right? You want to be able to save your money as much as possible when it comes to these type of runs. Vending machine reset is just there if you have a lot of cash. I honestly don't recommend using vending machine reset that much because as I was talking to Athen who, you know, I shared on Twitter of them having full perfect color palettes. They've shared with me that, you know, it's incredibly important for you to always save your cash for higher levels. Spending them early on vending machines is not worth it. Only spend it when necessary when resetting the floor, for example. I think vending machine discount is fine, but I think vending machine re resets are a little bit questionable, especially because it costs more cash to reset a vending machine than resetting a floor. So just be wary of that. I think it's still worth maxing out in case you find yourself in a situation where, you know, you have enough cash, you can reset, that's completely fine. But I would be very cautious of how you spend your money when you're doing these type of runs. 15th floor and 25th floor just come in clutch because let's say you find yourself on the 15th floor and the floor doesn't have a color that you want and you don't have a lot of cash on you, just go to the vending machine and if you see a palette that you want or the color that you need to complete your perfect palette, take it. If not, you could just leave. You're not forced to take anything or buy anything. But yeah, basically the hacks are there to assist you and help your RNG because the last thing that you're gonna need and it's like any game in Splatoon 3, you're gonna need RNG or rather luck on your side. A lot of these runs unfortunately just get, you know, thwarted because of luck. That's one of the elements that it comes to this. I got really lucky, but as you can see, it's not full. So some people getting all the way down, all the way full, it takes a lot of luck. Now you're probably wondering like, why would I wanna even do this? Why would I wanna do this to myself? Well. I think it's incredibly fun, you know, doing these specific types of palettes. As you're probably seeing on the gameplay on the video, there's a lot of craziness happening with Pearl basically taking care of me. Um, and this isn't just the other, like, really good one. I think luck is incredibly fun. I think mobility, especially on the brush when you're just literally zooming around and charging up your special is incredibly fun. I recommend trying things. And I think that's what, you know, side order is about. You try different things and it gives you a lot of replay value for what you want to do. So 
yeah, y'all, if y'all have any questions about, you know, how to get a perfect palette, or if you want to see a full perfect palette run, I linked down Athens perfect palette run in the description below, so be sure to check that out. But yeah, oh, another thing I forgot to mention is that the more common colors that you get on a palette, the more pearls you actually get at the end of your gameplay. But yeah, that's the end of the video, y'all. If y'all want to see the complete run of me doing it, feel free to comment down below and I'll post it in a separate video. But yeah, thanks for watching, y'all. I'll see y'all next time.